in this class i shall discuss about an example of cyclic scheduling so this algorithm schedules periodic tasks if n n number of processes are ready to run at any instant of time then the tasks with process continuous schedules will run each scheduling point will be uh, determined by the size of the frame and the scheduling point will be at the beginning of each frame only now let us consider the example so this is the example draw the gantt chart illustrating following process with cyclic scheduling and also find out the cpu utilization for the cyclic scheduling so we have four processes p1 p2 p3 and p4 the bus time is 1 millisecond 1.8 millisecond 1 millisecond and 2 millisecond arrival times of all jobs are arrived at zero instant of time period of p1 is 4 millisecond period of p2 is 5 millisecond period of p3 is 20 millisecond and period of p4 is 20 millisecond so now we have three constant we know that in your theory part we have discussed extensively the there are uh, three constant in constant 1 if a b an appropriate frame size then max of ei less than equal to a it means frame size so as per uh, the condition you see that your frame size should be true minimum so now for the constant 2 the major cycle aim of the given task is given by m equal to lcm of the periods 4 5 20 and 20 let's see the periods 4 5 20 and 20 so lcm is 20 so m equal to 20 so m should be an integral multiple of frame size so the condition the frame size possible frame size will be m mod a equal to 0 so from here we can get the size of the frame may be 2 4 5 10 and 20 the frame size of 1 has been ruled out since it violates the constant 1 so one cannot be because greater than equal to 2 we have already discussed here so now the constant 3 to satisfy this constraint you need to check whether a selected frame size a that means out of this 2 4 5 10 and 20 this should satisfy the inequality what is the inequality equation 2f minus dcd of f and pi less than equal to di for each pi that means pi is the periods at 4 5 20 20 and f is frame size i shall try for one frame size for all pi then next 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 frame size for all pi then suppose only one frame size is satisfies for all pi then that frame size will be taken into account suppose multiple frame size are satisfied this inequality then which frame size we shall take that means largest frame size among this satisfied frame size what is the reason the reason is that the if the largest frame size is chosen then the context switching will be minimum that means the elapsed time for the context switch will be minimized and that is the reason so now let us consider the conditions 2f minus gcd of a pi less than or equal to di to be tested for each pi and for each frame size a so let us the possible frame size are 2 4 5 10 and 20 so first consider f equal to 2 so now p1 equal to 2f minus gcd of f p1 so here 2 into f f is 2 here 2 into 2 minus gcd of 2 and 
four. The period is four. So two into two minus two equal to two. So less than equal to di. Di is four. Here period and delay is same. So it is satisfied. Now P two two f minus G C D of a P two two into two minus G C D of two of five. Five two and five, so two start two minus one. You see, the two and five is one, so it is three. So three less than equal to d two. D two is five. D satisfied. Now p three to a minus g c d a of p three equal to two into two minus g c d of two and twenty. So g c d of two and twenty two, and then two start to four four minus two. This two less than equal to d three d three twenty. So Two is less than equal to twenty, which is satisfied. Now P four, two F minus G C D A P four equal to two into two minus G C D of two twenty. So two into two minus two equal to two less than equal to D four. That means less than equal to twenty, which is satisfied. So the frame size F equal to two is satisfied for all P I. So F two may be F equal to two may be a possible frame size. You have to Check for other frame size like four, five, ten, and twenty. Let's do that. Now let us consider a p equal to four. So p one equal to twice a p minus g c d of a p one. So two into now it will be four frame size two f minus g c d of two four is two. So two into four eight minus two it is six less than equal to d one. Now d one is four. Now this equation inequality is not satisfied. So now these computations are not required at all because it has to satisfy for all P I. So P one, P two, P three, P four for all cases it has to be satisfied. But as P one for the case of P one it is not satisfied, so no need of computation of all that. Though I have computed all these things. So next go to The frame size five. You see, f equal to five. So p one equal to two f minus g c d a of p one equal to two star five minus g c d of two four. So two into five minus this two and four is two. So equal to eight. Ten minus two it is eight. So less than equal to d one. So less than equal to four. One second it is not satisfied. So one second f equal to five. Will not be taken as the frame size. Frame size five is not acceptable. So these computations are redundant computations. Though I have computed for your clarity, you can compute it. So the frame size five is not satisfied for all PI. So a p equal to five will not be a possible frame size. Now let us consider a p equal to ten. So here ten is also another possibility of frame size. So now p one equal to twice a p minus g c d a p of p one. So two into ten minus G C D of two four four is the period. So two into ten minus this G C D of two four is two. So twenty minus two eighteen less than equal to D I. Once again, D I is four, so it is not satisfied. So we shall not go for computation of others. Though I have computed, so the frame size F equal to ten is not satisfied for all P I. So F equal to ten will not be. A possible frame size. Now another frame size is left, which is twenty. Let us consider the frame size twenty and compute the inequality by z minus g c d of a p i less than equal to d i for each p i. Yeah. So p one equal to y z minus g c d of a p one. So equal to two star twenty minus g c d of two four. So two star twenty forty minus G C D two four is two. So forty minus two thirty eight less than equal to D I D one. So but D one is four. It is not satisfied. Here you see all conditions are non satisfied. So the frame size two only satisfied for all twenty is not satisfied. Hence the frame size will be two for this computability or schedulability. So F two will be the only frame size. Now let us compute the hyper period. What is the hyper period? You see, we have already discussed. So, hyper period equal to the LCM of period of P1 to period of Pn. 
PR4, P1, P2, P3, P4. So now now compute the prime factors for this four. You see four, two, 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 one. Five, five into five, one. Twenty, two, ten, two, five, five, one. Twenty, two, ten, two, five, 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 one. So factors are two into two, five, two into two, five, two into two into five. So two into two is the common, you see, and then five. You see, five into two into two, twenty. LCM is twenty. So hyper period is twenty. GCD is highest factor is five. Now the scheduling. Let's consider the scheduling here. The hyper period is twenty. So we shall take twenty units of time, twenty millisecond, one millisecond time slice as follows here. You see, these are zero to 20 we are taking and these are the various processes now regarding the readiness so as all processes are arrived at zero instant of time so at zero all processes will be ready now what is the uh, cpu was time of p1 1 so p1 will run for one unit of time then p3 will run one unit of time then p2 will run how long p2 will run 1.8 unit millisecond of time and 0.2 millisecond is cpu idle here so now at next you see p4 p4 is uh, yet to run because of the highest uh, bus time here you see now at that uh, point of four what are the scheduling point? Because if the frame size is two, so in each two unit of time, a frame will be there. So minor cycle. This is your minor cycle. This is another minor cycle. This is another minor cycle. This is another minor cycle. Eight to ten, one minor cycle. Ten to twelve, one minor cycle. Twelve to fourteen, one minor cycle. Fourteen to sixteen, sixteen to eighteen, eighteen to twelve. So these points 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, these are the scheduling point. So not each instant of each unit of time instant it will not be checked only at the beginning of the frame. At the beginning of the frame, it will be checked. So at 4, at 4, you see the period of P1 is 4. So P1 will be ready, P4 is ready. But you see P4 is 2, P1 is 1, so P1 will run. Then you see after that, P4 needs uh, 2 units of time, but it's 1, so CPU will be ideal because it is a non preemptive uh, scheduling, so I cannot preempt. Here, you see, P2 has come at 5. P2 has come at 5, so P2 cannot start because the frame started at 4. So here only I have the P2 and P4. Though P2 is ready at 5, so here P2 and P4, but P2 will run as 1.8 is there. So P2 will run for 1.8 and 0.2 unit millisecond of time will be wasted. Then at 8, once again, P1 is also ready, P4 is ready, so P1 is less, so P1 is running. Then after that, once again, you see one unit of time will be wasted, CPU will be idle. So because it's a non-preemptive static scheduling. Now at 10, at 10, you see P2 is ready, P4 is there. So P2 will run fast because of this time. So then once again, point 0.2 unit of time will be wasted, CPU. Then after that at 12, once again P1 is ready, so P1 will run. So you see the starvation of P4 is there. So that is why when I have taught the theory portion, that was the method that we should split the higher period into multiple number. And then it will be schedulability will be more. So that is why here P1, then that is CPU idle 13 to 14. Now, to has at 14 
no one is ready but p2 is ready p2 will get two unit of time it is two unit and then at 16 once again four multiple of four so p1 will be ready so p1 is ready p1 will run then next bus no fiddling so then because p2 need your 1.8 that is not here so here you see that p2 will be 18 to 20 but it is p2 1.8 so 0.8 will be wasted so you see that p1 should run at each four unit of uh, time at least once p5 will run five unit of time and p3 will run at 20 and p4 will run at 20 so this is shown here that p1 run period is 4 ready in every 4 unit of time so 0 4 8 12 16 20 4 8 12 16 and 20 p2 is a period of 5 ready in every 5 unit of time 0 5 10 15 and 20 0 5 p2 10 p2 15 p2 and 20 now p3 is ready in every 20 unit of time so p3 is here and p3 is here now p4 is ready in every 20 unit of time 0 to 20 p4 is here p4 is here so this is the scheduleability of this process so now the base algorithm based on the static priority and priority is based on cpu bus time and it is a non preemptive you cannot preempt any task so now consider the gantt chart we have already discussed the same thing will be here so this is your gantt chart so this is p1 p3 p2 cpu ideal p1 cpu ideal p2 2 unit p1 1 unit cpu ideal for 1 unit p2 for 1.8 then 0.2 unit cpu ideal then p1 for 1 unit 1 unit then 1 unit cpu ideal then p4 2 unit p1 1 unit 1 unit is cpu ideal then p2 for 1.2 8 unit then point unit is cpu ideal so this is one hyper cycle and it will be repeated again so this is your chart now computation of the cpu utilization now we know that ui equal to i equal to 1 to n summation ui equal to i equal to 1 to n ei by pi so e1 plus p1 e2 by p2 e3 by p3 e4 by p4 but here we are considering the actual scenario using the each time unit of running so p1 run you see one two three four five five unit of time between 0 to 1 4 to 5 8 to 9 12 to 13 16 to 17. now p2 runs 1.8 from 2 to 4 1.8 from 6 to 8 1.8 millisecond from 10 to 12 1.8 millisecond from 18 to 20 so in total 7.2 units that is milliseconds what i have taught so, now p3 runs one unit because the hyper period is 20 and the period of p3 is 20 so it will run once only in a hyper period so this run in one to two based on its parity one unit or one millisecond now p4 runs two unit because the cp bus was two unit it is 14 to 16 you see the starvation it's run at 14 to 16 only for the two units are two milliseconds so now total CPU run 5 plus 7.2 plus 1 plus 2 equal to 15.2 units. Now total CPU time wasted 1 between 5 to 6, 1 between 9 to 10, 1 between 13 to 14, 1 between 17 to 18. Then 4 places in each cases 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0.2, so 4.8 units or millisecond. So length of hyper cycle is 20. So the CPU utilization is 15.2 by 20 because hyper cycle is 20 into 100 equal to 76 percent. So this is the absolute algorithmic interpretation into an example of cyclic scheduling. So you practice some more example like this. Thank you.